I was exhausted, had aches and pains, and, and I had a fever of 102.8 at that point, and that's when I knew I was sick. But uh, yeah, no, it, it came on rapidly. For me, I was fortunate I did not have a, a bad respiratory component to this. My oxygenation in the emergency room was, was okay, and then I went home and stayed in bed for two weeks. I was in one room because I, I live with my wife, and so I wanted me, didn't want her to get infected. My daughter was worried about getting exposed to it, and my wife as well, so I'm trying to still isolate myself. But there were times when it, when it seemed like the, it would not end. When I was eight, nine days out and I still felt sick, I'm wondering what's going on. And at nighttime, you know, and you just wake up and, you know, you have your moments where it's scary. But uh, most of the time I, I realized or thought that I was going to be able to get through this because, I, again, I was having no respiratory problems. He volunteered. He actually was very excited about helping um, through his own like personal experience and really wanting to see these patients firsthand and be a part of it. So he actually asked to be a part of it. My wife wondered if it was safe and could I get it again, and you know, but and also could she get it? So she, you know, we had that discussion. But I think you take the precautions you can take. You wear the mask, you do the gloves, you, you know, and you, and you know, you're very careful with with that. But I think we're doctors, and you know, that's why I went into this. We're gonna. I spoke to Fatima Chowdhury, who's one of the okay. counselors. And we said so much about him that going through that and coming to the other side, that he is so just empathizing and scared for and wanting to help people that are in that same position and worse. Or that's exactly the kind of doctor you would want, or like I would want my family member to have. So having had the illness, I know how long it takes to recover, and it took me a while to get my strength back, quite a while. And I, these patients who are much sicker and had a much worse time of, uh, in terms of the illness that they had will take uh, even longer. So I'm trying to get motivated, motivate patients to want to do it. you got to want to get out of here. You gotta wanna get out of bed. The background of having a surgeon come in has actually been really enlightening because, I don't know, things just like regarding like physical therapy, different involvement from family members. He was really drawing attention to that. It's been really great to get somebody else's point of view. Um, and it's, like I said, he's been so eager to learn about the medicine aspect of it. Lennox Hill's done a marvelous job dealing with this. Again, I, when I left, it was just getting, on, getting into this war footing and I came back and it was already there. And I was, um, I was just so impressed with the way they, uh, they redistributed staff, they redeployed, you know, made new units. I see light at the end of the tunnel for this first wave of, the, of this thing, this first peak. I think we're on our way down and I think we will uh, get back to this, the normal life, but I think that life will not be the same. And uh, I'm, glad, I'm just happy that I could do something. We're there for one reason only, which is to take care of these COVID patients. I was very happy to, uh, to join them and to, that they accepted me.